Dero, Jock Peterson is a unique character, no yes, doubt, but man, he can rake. Yes, he is. Flair for the dramatic, slows down the big moments all the time. I mean, postseason for days. What he's been able to do, set, I mean, I live in Atlanta. What he did with the Pearls coming into Atlanta, win the back-to-back -back World Series with the Dodgers and the Atlanta Braves. I think back to 2011 when I was sitting in that San Francisco Giants locker room next to Carlos Beltran, who had just come over in a trade, and Barry Bonds came in to say hello to him, and he pulled up a chair, and we had a similar conversation as to the one Jock Peterson, I'll get into it, is referring to in his sound that's coming up. I didn't go out and hit three homers and drive in eight RBIs, all right? So pretty unbelievable. Let's bring up the first board, because I want to dive in. I think people don't realize he got off to a monumental start and then got cold and then tweaked his groin, disappeared for a little bit, and now he's back. But look at all these notable stats. Statcast powered by Google Cloud. And Eric Nays does a great job of explaining this to me. You look at expected average, the X is expected, and that's based on quality of contact. We're taking into account exit velocities, launch angles, strikeouts, walks. Not every single's the same, not every double's hit the same. We're, we're using a lot of different metrics to come up with this, and he is top of the food chain. When you take a look at hard hit rate, barrel percentage, expected average, expected slug, and expected WOBA, which is just even a better metric than OPS. You're taking on base percentage and slug, throwing in hard hit rate, exit velocity, and you're coming up with the fact that he's one of the best in the game. So let's dive in because over the first 16 games, we were nailing a skybox on Jock Peterson. He had many moments. He had 353 with six homers. He had a 745 slug. Remember that <laughs> night in Miller Park? He turned to those fans. Pause this. Turned to those fans heckling him, and he let him know with a dead center bomb to win a big ball game. And then he went into a little bit of a tailspin. His next 17 games after coming back from a little groin tweak, he was hitting 089 with one homer. So I wanted to see, was he doing anything different? Was he set up any different? This is him really good, and this is him against Tony Gonsolin recently, early May, where he strikes out. So run this real quick and get me to foot contact. Pause right there, okay? All I see, and this is minimal stuff, I see a little tighter shoulders maybe in May 4th. Maybe he's pressing a little bit. Maybe he's opening up his front side just a smidge earlier, giving up a little bit of power, getting off his backside. You see right here when he's landing, his foot's in a more powerful position to fire and use the ground. Maybe May 4th against Tony Gonsolin. I see 12 of you guys get into this too, where they want to almost open the hip and start pointing their toe and they lose a lot of power. Tom Brady, I saw you on Twitter swinging a bat too. We'll get into that a little bit later. <laughs> Very similar. But this is minimal stuff. You knew he was going to get hot again. So you go through tail spins, it's minor tweaks, run this. And then he sits down with Barry Bonds, has a nice conversation. Starts to get his lower half under him. Mm. Mm. Run that back for me real quick. Oh, oh. Mm. Right out of the gate, bottom of the third. Try to go cut her in. Run it. Quick and short to the baseball. What a beautiful night in San Francisco. And gets them on the board right there. Gives them a lead. This is the one for me. 2-0 count. Run that back. He's going to get a two-seamer down and away. No cheat to this in a big ballpark. And he stays through this, keeps his lower half under him, sets the foot down, and he knows it instantly. When you, in the middle of the night in San Francisco, know you got it to dead center, you didn't miss a stitch of this thing. Crushed. And then now we're unconscious. Because run that back. You even see, he looks at Drew Smith, the pitcher, like, I don't even know how I hit that. He's set up away. Patrick Mazik is set up away. We get 98 missed in. Watch him pull his hands into this baseball. I'm in the zone. Let me go for a stroll right here. He mixed in another knock late in the game. Take a look at that. I mean, you talk about pulling your hands oh, to wow. a baseball and getting the barrel to a baseball, something Barry Bonds talks about a lot. Lucas. 
Run the sound after this game of him talking about his conversation with Barry. It sounds cliche, but he, Barry Bonds was here and uh, he he talked to uh, me and uh, Lamont Wade for quite a while and we were just talking and then uh, the discussion kind of continued and next thing you know, it was like 625 and I was like, oh man, I got to go. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it just freed my mind up. He The way he <laughs> talks about hitting just uh, helped me out a little bit. And I mean, that's the absolute beauty of having a guy, the greatest hitter that I ever had a chance to play against, number 25 in San Francisco, Barry Bonds. I mean, you almost became a fan when he came up to hit. You had to tell yourself, I'm actually playing against him because you almost wanted to see him go deep. I saw him do things on a field, Wrigley Field with the wind blowing in. Nobody's going deep. Yep, he's going into the baskets. John Smoltz. He had John Smoltz's number. He almost wanted to tell him one time, here, heater, boom, 500 feet deep. So what did Barry tell Jock? I wasn't there for the conversation last night, but every time that I spoke with Barry or sat and listened to him talk, he focused on doing a couple different things at the plate and simplifying it. And in 2016, he sat down with Eduardo Perez before a Sunday night baseball game. He was the hitting coach for the Miami Marlins at the time. Run that sound of kind of what he was trying to accomplish at the plate. I don't care if you throw 100 miles an hour. I don't care if you throw 120 miles an hour. There's a catcher behind home plate, and that catcher catches that ball every time with a glove. Only thing I did was change the object from glove to a bat. And all I got to do is catch it. This has to become extension to my arm. If this doesn't become an extension to me, if we can't become one, then there's a problem. It's like golf, you know, when you get that little right. driver in your hand or you get a little sand wedge, and I ain't no golfer, so, and you just take this nice, easy swing and you just chip it, then all of a sudden you get that driver in your hand, all of a sudden you want to do all this, and everything breaks down. That's a problem. It's a problem. You talk about simplifying stuff. You can run this right here side by side with Jock and Barry. I don't think anybody simplifies the game or has more fun playing the game than Jock Peterson. And just to listen to Barry talk about the simplicity of trying to catch. He talked about Sammy Sosa. I, I watched him take flips one night and he talked about, and I said this multiple times on the show, this is my steering wheel, this is my power. And from the left side, obviously it's the opposite. This is my steering wheel. He talks about it becoming an extension of his hands and arms. That's what he means with that. And then talking about catching it with his barrel, that's his bottom, uh, that's his hand right here. He's in this situation, top hand right here, and just trying to catch the baseball and driving it in the most powerful position. What a night for Jock. Three homers, eight ribbies. He's had some special, special really moments has. in his career, Robert. He, he really has. He is a big time performer. Yeah. He performed in a big, big way.